Good morning. Today's Wednesday, 3rd of June, Feria Memorial of St. Charles Luanga. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. And the readings continue from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 18 to 27. Some Sadducees, who deny that there is a resurrection, came to Jesus and they put this question to him. Master, we have it from Moses in writing. If a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a wife and then died, leaving no children. The second married the, window, the widow and he too died, leaving no children. With the third it was the same, and none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman herself died. Now, at the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be, since she has been married to all seven? Jesus said to them, Is not the reason why you go wrong, that you understand neither the scripture nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, men and women do not marry. No, they are like the angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising again, have you never read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him and said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God, not of the dead, but of the living. You are very much mistaken. Gospel of the Lord. So, as we saw at the beginning of the week, we had a number of feast days or memorials for martyrs this week. And this time it's St. Charles Luanga, who him and together with about 20 other of his companions, Christians, in Uganda in about 1880, were put to death by the king because they dared to criticise his behaviour, which was simply immoral and outrageous. To use modern language, they spoke truth to power, and power crushed them. They became martyrs. But the truth they were speaking was the truth of Christ, and they're forever remembered, both in Uganda and across Africa, as the first martyrs who gave their blood, planting the seed of Christ, the church in Africa. The first reading today is from Paul's letter to Timothy. and He reminds Timothy, don't be timid. Trust the Spirit has come to you. Speak out with courage and power. Yes, you'll have, you'll have hardships, you'll have opposition, you'll have troubles. But, as he puts it, Jesus has conquered death and your mishaps and your mystery and your troubles are minor details on the way. Because you know and I know in our faith that God is with us, and through Jesus we have the power of eternal life. It's this eternal life in the Gospel which the Sadducees question. They do not believe in the resurrection of the dead or eternal life. And so they've come to Jesus with what they think is an absolute knockdown argument. Uh, the woman who married seven men, and none of them gave her any children. And then the question is, uh, after the resurrection of the dead, who's Whose wife would she be? And Jesus says, no, you've got to look above that. The kingdom of God is life eternal, and life eternal is being with God, being known that you're loved by God, and seeing God, and loving God. And he, at the end, he's absolutely, classically argumentative, in a good way, saying, when God spoke to Moses, he said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
God of the living, or the, not the dead, saying absolutely firmly that he's the God of the living and therefore Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are continue to live. And the last phrase of the gospel is, you're wrong. Jesus was not afraid to say, you're wrong, when it comes to the resurrection and life eternal. We rejoice with the Spirit given to us at Pentecost and with our certain knowledge through this gift of the Spirit that Jesus has risen again and has shared that eternal life with us. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response to the bidding prayers is, You redeemed us by your precious blood. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who were slain for God's word, let us give glory to our Saviour, the faithful and true witness. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs you bore witness to your love. Set us free to live for you. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who proclaimed your saving death, give us a deep and constant faith. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs who took up your cross, grant us courage for every trial. You redeemed us by your precious blood. Through the martyrs washed in the blood of the Lamb, give us grace to conquer our weakness. You redeemed us by your precious blood. We turn to our Father, the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Lord God, you have made the blood of martyrs become the seed of Christians. In your love, grant that your church, the field that was moistened by the blood of St. Charles and his companions, may always yield a fertile harvest for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a good day.